This is why I have to bring up again, and we've mentioned him many times, Albert Pike, 33 degree Mason, the author of Morals and Dogma. But all in all, guess what? An admitted Luciferian, born 1809. In the late, in the late 1800s, uh, um, in the late 1800s, he wrote a book called uh, Morals and Dogma. In Morals and Dogma, in the late 1800s, he, he made a letter highlighting the Masonic, the Masonic agenda to usher in Lucifer as the true God of this world that the most people are in the earth who are worshiping secretly without knowing. Right? And it so happened he's a 33 degree Mason. And it so happened that when you look at the secrets of the times uh, and when you sum it up, uh, Elder Shapat, with the with the what with the gnostic calendar 2033 would be the consummation okay mm. that means if all things is still in line with the with the enoch and gnostic calendar 2033 would be the end of the masonic luciferian timeline now oh yeah folks we're going in right now in the letter it tells us what their plans would be right their plans would be according to their 33 degree mason who so happened to have a statue around the corner from the white house and wasn't an elected official mind you but still honored as one the first world war this war to be battled out so as to enable the illuminati to overthrow the powers of the czar in russia and turn Russia into a strong fortress of atheistic communism. So this was before all of that. They said this was the plan for Russia. What have Russia become? The difference stirred up the agent tour of the Illuminati between German and British empires were to be used to foment this first world war. Then when the war has ended, communism was built up and used to destroy other governments and to weaken religions. See? Because what? The religions resist immorality. In order for them to bring forth Lucifer, they must do what? Destabilize the world by making what? Making people immoral to do away with the resistance, which is what? The laws of God and the fear of God. And if so, this happened. It was the World War I, right? Then check this out. The first war must be brought about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the Tsar. Check out the second one. The second war must be formatted by taking advantage of the differences between the fascists and the political Zionists. This war must be brought about so that Nazism, Germany anyone, Hitler anyone, it seems like they knew about this, this would happen before there was any such man born on the earth as Hitler. This war must be brought about so that Nazism is destroyed and the political Zionism be strong enough to institute sovereign state of Israel in Palestine. So in the late 1800s, they had a plan through the second war to have a people go into Israel, into Palestine to make what? A state of Israel out of their own people. See this? During the second world, <coughs> world war, International communism must become strong enough in order to balance Christendom, which, which would be then understated and held in check until the time when we would need it for the final social cataclysm. So they're going to use Christianity at the end, right? Third World War. The third war must be formatted by taking advantage of the differences, the differences caused by the agent of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. War on terror, anyone? The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam and political Zionism mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations once more divided of these issues will be constrained to fight the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economical exhaustion. And that's where we're at. The citizens of the world, the people of the world, children of God, we're exhausted at this point. One thing after the, the, the next, politically, we have to deal with. 
And it seems like it's planned. There's no rest. It's one thing after the other, right? We go from a disease, from a disease to something else, and then a fire, then, then rain, then whatever, earthquake, right? We shall unleash. Now, now this, this is them saying it themselves, uh, Shapat. We shall unleash the nihilist and the atheist. We shall unleash the nihilist and the atheist, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism. Mm. A world who believed nothing at all was their plan. It took time, they're patient, but they've accomplished it. It says, of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere, listen and listen good, the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusion with Christianity because people are going to, people are going to claim Christians aren't different, any different than anyone else. So they're going to do away with any strength Christianity had to oppose Satan and miseducated against the moral values that was established under Christianity whose deistic spirits will fr from that moment be without compass or direction. People are not going to know up from down, left from right, male from female. Mm. Anxious, anxious for an ideal, but without knowing where to render adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer. Brought finally out in the public view. There you go. 33 degree, 33 degree Mason, Satanist. And hey, they try to claim that it was a forgery. They don't know who really wrote the letter. Well, whoever wrote the letter, I'll tell you, they had some serious insight. At the end of the day, folks, we're living what they said would happen. Okay? We're living it. So when you see those temples those lodges all over the place that's connected to the political structure understand that they're pushing slowly but surely progressively these secret agendas into full sight without resistance mm -hmm. they're operating in the cities politically to move these agendas you don't know whether or not they're moving these agendas until you understand their plan mm -hmm. now does it make sense <laughs> exactly. Now, now you see that the Bible is real. It prophesied cha changing of kinds, because if you have changing of kinds, you have people who are immoral and believe not in God. Now, suppose you put these people in all high positions to run the world and to move the world politically with no fear of God. You get the hell we're living under today. The Bible. Is it hard to understand? when it comes to reading the Bible. The first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the word of God. The seals have been broken and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited.